I have recently made a video about Tom Scott's FizzBuzz challenge. I explained what he did in his video, and picked up where he left off, finishing his FizzBuzz challenge. I wrote an algorithm which was neat, easy to understand, and avoided repetition of code. So why all the hate? Well, let's look at the issues brought up in the comments section, why these are important, and see if we should address them. First of all, context. My code was intended to target two problems raised by Tom in his video, the repetition of lines. After all, those lines there, I'm technically repeating myself. And easy maintainability. Because if someone says, okay, now we want it to work on multiples of seven, not five, and, and that's a common sort of follow-up question for something like this, you have to remember to change all the fives. Now, I, I think there are still better ways to code this, particularly if you wanted to plan long into the future. These were the issues Tom himself mentioned, so my target was improving these. I did not take speed, big O notation, or type safety into consideration. The focus was here on a clear and concise ruler set that can be easily understood and modified. Nonetheless, let's look at the most commonly raised issues and see if we can do the impossible and make everyone happy on the internet. First of all, let's address an interesting complaint that kept popping up the issue of premature optimization. Given the fact that the whole point of the video was about how to optimize code specifically for long term readability and maintainability, this complaint completely misses the point. Moving on, the most frequently mentioned issue is the heterogeneous array for the rule set. So what does that mean? Why is that an issue, and do we actually have that here? A heterogeneous array means that the items in a list have different data types, such as strings, integers, reals, objects, and so on. In most languages, arrays are generally designed to hold elements of the same data type, and without it, it becomes harder to maintain type safety. This means it will be more difficult to predict the type of data a specific index may contain, leading to potential issues in the code. Allocating, accessing, and manipulating data will also become more difficult, as different data types require different amounts of memory space and operations, which can lead to performance overhead. For these reasons, it is good practice to stick to the same data type in an array. However, when looking at this array, each element is of the same data type and object but they have different structures, so an argument can be made that the elements are non-uniform, and thus the array is heterogeneous. So let's start by doing what so many in the comment section have asked and separate out the limit into a new variable, leaving a nice homogeneous array. And since we're here already, we should absolutely 100% declare that both the array and the limit are constants. The other issue raised a lot was going from on to on squared, making the program significantly slower. This means that as we increase the size of the rule set, the time complexity of the program is not linear, but quadratic, which at first might seem true, as we have nested loops, but let's double check that. Before we get too technical, let the program speak for itself and see how much slower this version is to Tom's. This type of measurement might not be the most accurate, and you may wish to run your own experiment and leave your result in the comments section, but with no other applications running, and having run both versions a fair amount of times, there is actually no substantial difference. But why not? Well, if we look at the code, we can see that even though it looks like Tom does not have nested loops, really, he does. It's just instead of checking the conditions iteratively, he has them all laid out in a sequence. We both perform the same number of operations, though it's true that the loop itself comes with a bit of overhead time. So what about the big O notation? Did we actually go from linear to quadratic? Well, no, but why? After all, we have a nested loop, and as many people pointed out, a nested loop means a time complexity of n squared, right? Wrong. Nested loops don't necessarily mean a quadratic increase. Let's see why. Take the example of this nested for loop. Here, both the outer and inner loops iterate n times, which means doubling n will quadruple the number of iterations we have to run. A classical example of on squared. But when looking at the fizzbuzz loops, we can see that the two for loops don't have this kind of relationship. The number of iterations for the outer loop is determined by the limit variable, and the number of inner loops is determined by the length of the rule set array. Increasing either one of those will only affect one of the loops, thus the big O notation for this is O n times m. The total amount of numbers we are going through times the number of rules we are checking, just like it is for Tom's solution. However, Mr. Rabbit5642 suggested an edit 
which is a really good idea. Instead of using an if statement to check and update the output string and log separately, we can simply use the OR logical operator. This will print the output string if it is not empty or print I if it is. Now, when looking at the code, we can clearly see that the only real change we've made to Tom's version was removing the repeated lines of code and separating them into a meaningful array of rules. And even though this does come at a cost of negligible time delay, as Tom said, I'll leave fixing that as a problem for someone else. This is good enough for me.